coming to your day to day practice scenarios of neoplasms of the salivary gland now there are going to be benign there are going to be malignant commonly neoplasms are most common in parotid and most of them are benign then when it comes to submandibular glands the lesions they are very very highly uh, associated with malignancies so parotid benign pathology should be first on your mind and in submandibular the malignancies if the mass is huge many a times you may not be able to different differentiate the planes especially something lying at the angle of the mandible always always be frank and ask for ct and mr now how are you going to evaluate your salivary glands neoplasms so first and foremost whether it is within the parotid or it is outside the parotid then benign ke liye it has to be well defined solitary homogeneous if you see a mass which is inhomogeneous locally invading showing chaotic vascularity on doppler coming with facial paralysis clinically always 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 suspect of malignancy extra parotid lesions if your ultrasound imaging is equivocal ask for ct and mr so the most commonest in day to day practice is a female who would walk in with your clinic who is more than 40 years of age sitting with a parotid mass for donkey's years and a not done any imaging and comes decides to do an ultrasound imaging of your parotid gland typically a hypoechoic solid mass like this with lobulated margins very very poor vascularity look at this image this is nothing but a pleomorphic adenoma so see this bosselated appearance inhomogeneous and slow growing mass sitting in the parotid for many many years always always think in terms of a pleomorphic adenoma as against wardens typically will occur in the 5th 6th decade of life you will most of the times commonly seen it in males who are smokers and they they very rarely affect the submandibular glands you will always always see it in a, in a parotid gland in fact this tumor has very good prognosis of the after removal and doesn't uh, cause any kind of recurrence so you see something like this which is a well defined mass see slit like anechoic cystic spaces pleomorphic adenoma will rarely show cystic degeneration but wardens typically has this uh, slit like cystic spaces smoker putting two and two together you can think in terms of a wardens then talking about malignancies in a salivary gland so this becomes an area of gray zone you cannot pinpoint and say that this is malignancy and this is benign so as i was telling you submandibular site gland is a cryptic site for developing malignancies and therefore neoplasms related to that should be viewed with a high suspicion for malignancies secondly whenever you have facial nerve paralysis in any lesion always always suspect cancer first and benign pathologies later so see this case i think given by mohit only which was an adenoid cystic malignancy it looks like a wardens but solid areas cystic areas and then lot of vascularity within it and then this was proved to be a malignant tumor now lymphomas have come up in a big way especially in an hiv era so you see a large solid mass completely occupying the parotid gland trust me it's very difficult to make a diagnosis of a lymphoma just on imaging but if you see a solid mass with uh, this kind of appearance always always ask for an fna biopsy and can you can make a diagnosis of a lymphoma then metastasis do do you see meds in parotid yes basically parotid is a site where head face neck region malignancies can metastasize melanoma can metastasize to the parotid and see this rare case again from mohit where this was a renal cell carcinoma which post surgery has undergone recurrence see this parotid intralegional lymph nodes see the vascularity they showed and this was to be proved to be a renal cell carcinoma metastasis in the parotid gland just to conclude talk some miscellaneous lesions so lipomas can occur anywhere so typically fibrillar pattern hypoechoic oval in fact lipomas look everywhere like this feathery striated pattern within the parotid this is a lipoma then epidermal inclusion cyst you all all have become masters by now so pseudo testes pattern hypoechoic this was an epidermal inclusion cyst now with hiv era 
lymphoepithelial cysts or cysts within the parotid gland are also known and they can appear anechoic to this kind of pseudocystic pattern. In fact, this was a proven lymphoepithelial cyst usually has an association with HIV and usually bilateral.